Kerala jewelry. Kerala jewelry. This is Nikita. <laughs> This is a very interesting piece. I'm Nikita Anand and I'm on a quest across India for the most exquisite jewellery to behold fine craftsmanship and modern inspiration in all its glitter. Thank you. Join me on Oh My Gold. It's my first day in Thiruvananthapuram and I can see why it is called the Evergreen City of India. Lush and alive, the city takes its name from a mythical holy serpent whose figure resides in the great Sri Padmanabha Swami temple. Attracting traders from around the world as early as 1000 BC, this city is now a hotspot for tourism and a hotbed of gold jewellery. at this temple where I'm going to meet a very special lady who's going to give me a golden glimpse into the age-old traditions of Kerala. This is Gayatri Suhas and she will be my guide to the world of Kerala jewellery. She has invited me to be a part of a special Saraswati Puja organized by her family. Gayatri tells me that the ceremony is being held for the children of the family to initiate them into the world of learning. Can you see yeah. rice on that? Rice. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a golden pen with turmeric, turmeric tip. After the chanting of shlokas, the child is made to write with a golden oh. pen on a bed of rice. This is the traditional offering to Goddess Saraswati. A golden stick dipped in honey is then used to write on the child's tongue, signifying that henceforth her speech be golden. This festive occasion is also an opportunity for family members to wear their finest gold jewellery. The Saraswati Puja is an important Hindu ritual in the life of a child here and evidently gold is a significant part of it. At the ceremony, I saw how gold is intrinsically woven into the lives of people here. Now it's time for my own initiation into the world of Kerala gold. I decided to surprise Gayatri at her family's jewellery store, Bhima, one of the largest gold retailers in Kerala. Hey Gayatri! Hi. Hi! Good to see you! Welcome to Bhima! Thank you so much. This is a palace of gold. It is my palace of gold. Yes. Why is this place so crowded? In Kerala, actually, the entire family comes to shop together. So I've heard of families taking a holiday together, taking a cruise together. Right. But yes. here in Kerala, they shop together for they gold. They do. They do. That's the power of gold. Have you seen Kerala jewellery before? No, and I'm hoping that you will show it to me. I will. I'll introduce you to Kerala jewellery. Please. Nikita, this is Kerala jewellery. Kerala jewellery, this is Nikita. <laughs> The original depictions of Kerala jewellery can be found in murals inside the Sri Padmanabha Swami temple. Subtle. There's nothing subtle about Kerala jewellery. Mm. It's very bright. Okay. That is one. And there are a lot, play of a lot of motifs here. This one, it is an imitation of tiny flowers, you know. They're like jasmine. Oh, I'd like, like to try this. Flowers. Why not? Sure. 
It is actually a very traditional piece, but it's also very. It it's is very light. It is. Is there a reason for that? Are all pieces essentially light? Most of it is made out of dyes, dye work. So they're all going to be light, pocket friendly, as pocket it friendly. Ah, <laughs> as it can get. Yes. See, you know, it has that an African touch, if you ask me. A little Love tribal. It. Then you have leaves here. They're repl replicas of people leaves, and it's a little blingy. There is a lot of respect for gods and for nature, and I think they bring it out in jewelry as well. Lovely. This particular piece is another favorite of mine. It is actually called uh, the Pavitra Ketta, or it means the sacred knot. In ancient days, when uh, the pujaris performed pujas, they you know, wound, the grass was tied up into a sacred knot on their ring finger. So the woman, I think, wanted wanted it translated into gold. And I, I why agree. not? Yes, why not? You know, something that's really striking my eye is, is the second uh, piece from the left. Okay, this one. Which reminds me of, yeah, mango motifs. Yes, you're right. It is mango motifs. Even today, traditional motifs such as gods, animals, flowers and fruits are very popular. The entire thing is Kerala jewelry in a nutshell for you. I'm really overwhelmed. There's so much gold right now in front of me. Yes, there is. Yes. I need to let it all sleep in. In olden times, goldsmiths and artisans received royal patronage to create the most exotic and exquisite ornaments. This is the classic cassava mala that can be worn in multiple ways. For the 70s look, wrap it around your forehead and feel the flower power. Push it back further for a really funky hairband. For the ultra chic look, wear it as a neck piece. It's also the perfect necklace to team up with your party wear. These are nice and Fancy and decorative. Yeah, it's like Kerala people like this umbrella. They make this beautiful rattling sound. This is Kovalam, an exciting little seaside town that is one of the hottest tourist destinations near Thiruvananthapuram. Hitting the beach is a great idea on this warm, sunny day. And I found a golden way to stay cool. Hi. Hello. Are all these umbrellas yours? Yeah, all my umbrella. These are nice and fancy and decorative. Yeah, it's like Kerala people like this umbrella. They love gold. Yeah, love. So they put gold even on the umbrellas. Yeah. Then after uh, this gold umbrella, you take this one. Uh huh. Now this, uh, it's sun bolts off. Gone the so way. It, yeah. You're saying the gold reflects the sunlight. Yeah. So you make golden sunglasses also. Yeah. Golden bikinis. Yeah. Lot of golden bikinis, golden sun, but not here inside. Okay, tell me out of all these, yes. which is the most popular one? This one. This one? Yeah. Very good. This is lovely. Can I have this? Yeah, you should you should take this. Thank you. The colourful markets of Hava Beach are laden with shacks selling food, trinkets, funky accessories and jewellery. But retail therapy doesn't have to be on the itinerary. It's the perfect place to just window shop. One of the most popular kinds of jewellery here is what's locally termed as holistic jewellery. This promises to balance the chakras or yogic energy centres of the body. It's got me really curious and I'm just the person who can show me some jewellery for mind, body and soul. Hi. Hi. It's very nice to see you. Ah, oh, lovely to see you. You know, I'd been told that there's a lady here from the UK who designs holistic jewellery. 
I really want to know what is holistic jewellery all about? Well, it's really inspired by nature, especially this collection. We've got wood and we've got shells, we've got mm -hmm. pearls, we've got semi-precious stones. Um, and it's really to do with um, balancing the body, the chakras. It's really sort of like a holistic approach, really, mind, body and spirit. So how does wearing your jewellery balance or centre oneself? How does that happen? Well, the shell, for example, is very cooling and relaxing. So it's, it's best for someone who's short-tempered or hot-tempered? Yes, definitely. It's very cooling, calming, nurturing, really. Yes. So is there any other stone which energises or, you know, makes you more active? Yes, well, we've got, I mean, in this necklace, we, it combines the coral with the turquoise and it's set right. in silver. Mm -hmm. And the combination of both of those are really very uplifting to the mind and the spirit. And this is a lovely necklace for balancing the chakras because you can see we've got lots of different colours of the quartz crystal. So when you wear the colour of the chakra, it brings the chakra back into balance. So it's really a very lovely necklace to wear. I agree. So Claire, what is this material here? This is wood. And this wood has been enamelled to mm -hmm. make it nice and smooth and shiny and easy to wear so that it's not rough on the inside. Right. So is this how you normally showcase your jewellery by wearing all of it on you? I love bling, I love jewellery and I wear a lot of jewellery. But no, not when I'm doing the ironing and the washing. <laughs> The enamel wood is actually looking very interesting and I've, I've never come across this before. I will make that specially for you. Oh, great. Whether it's for self-healing and balance or just for fun, the world of holistic jewellery has something for everyone. I've heard that the people of Kerala have a blingy secret, a love for diamonds. So I've seen so much shiny yellow gold yeah, and now I'm getting to see nice. a lot of diamonds. Are diamonds very popular here? Very popular. The trend is also changing now in South India. More and more people are going in for diamond jewellery now. So I'll show you some of Bhima's signature pieces. This is a designer collection. Do you want to try them? I will certainly look try gorgeous. This, this is another interesting concept of the Gita Padesha. This is uh, Lord Krishna mm -hmm. reciting the whole sermon to Arjuna which later on becomes the Bhagavad Gita. See, it's like you're wearing a part of history on you that will make you feel special. <laughs> so, <laughs> what is fashionable right now? Oh, okay. okay. So, these days, colour stones are really popular with everyone. Okay. These are actually the beads, ruby beads. And it's set with a nice uh, close setting uh, pendant. Since you asked what else is in fashion, I'll show you another eye-catching piece. It is scribed on it. Like it will not find these kind of pieces anywhere. So what statement so, is this making? I think it's shouting out loud. Buy me, buy me, buy me, you know. <laughs> no, I think it's saying gift it. Gift it. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> The new wave of concept designs, statement pieces and the popularity of uncut diamonds in Kerala's jewellery reflects a new style that mixes southern design with a dash of northern flair. To fully appreciate Kerala jewellery, you need to be acquainted with its traditions and styles. Which brings me here to Kaudiar Palace. This is the residence of the erstwhile royal family of Travancore and I'm here to meet a very special Hello. lady. Namaste. Namaste. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having invited me. It's a pleasure to have you here all the same. Thank you, thank you. Historically, the finest jewels and grandest jewellery were owned by royalty. I could hardly wait to be led into the shining world of classic Kerala jewellery by an erstwhile royal, no less. All girls like to look at pretty jewellery, don't they? Yes, yes, and I'm no exception. These are interesting bangles because they look very heavy. It's and they make this beautiful rattling sound. That's because it has gravel from the riverbed. When you wear these to dance and you make the arm hand movements, you hear the little rattle. It enhances the, the female figure. Basically. And the beauty. Well, and if you are not very beautiful, it, I suppose, detracts from the lack of looks. Well, that's, that's not, certainly not the case with you. Now, this is a very interesting piece. This is called the 
Puli Nakham Mala. Puli is really leopard. So this is supposed to resemble the leopard's claws. Claws. And what what is this? This blue color that we see here? This blue color is a special kind of glass. In the olden days, gold ornaments were customarily handcrafted by the royal family artisans. Today, these antique pieces are prized for their antiquity and fine craftsmanship. All these pieces could be worn by anyone. There's nothing to say that this is only royalty except mm -hmm. the piles. Now the piles were made of gold right. and traditionally only royalty wore gold on the on the ankle. On the ankle, but you never went beyond that. You don't step on gold. So you did not wear toe rings. Uh -huh. Let me show you something. Now these are four pieces. The black thing in this is the hair from an elephant's tail. Oh wow, why has that been used? Because the hair from the elephant's tail is supposed to keep away fear. It's supposed to make you brave and strong. And this one, you see, even in the old days, they knew that women's hands came in all sizes. So, so it's adjustable. It, it's adjustable. After an enlightening afternoon, I left the palace completely charmed by the rich tradition of gold ornamentation, which is a part of the heritage of this ancient city. Look at this beautiful Vishnu pendant, decorated with exquisite Burmese rubies. But that's not all. It's a Navratna Mala, studied with nine precious gemstones. It is said to have a positive influence on its wearer. Nothing better than gold to keep the planet gods happy. The one of the most favorite pieces of mine from this collection is this necklace. What is the one piece that you would recommend for me? During the 18th century, Thiruvananthapuram emerged as a major centre for arts and culture and gave rise to one of the most iconic painters in India's history. I've heard there's a jewellery exhibition happening here, which is a tribute to Raja Ravi Verma. And since I'm in Kerala, his land, I couldn't resist the opportunity of coming here and seeing it for myself. So here I am. Born into an aristocratic family, Raja Ravi Verma possessed a keen sense of ornamentation and a deep love for the women of South India. Today, his works continue to inspire cinema, theatre, pop culture and even modern jewellery designers. Divya is one of them. Divya fuses art with modern sustainable design. She uses recycled products like broken glass frames, miniature medicine bottles and even disposable spoons. This is from a plastic disposable spoon mm -hmm. that you just eat and throw. I've used this to make a brooch and it's got a very rare painting of Saraswati taking a stroll along a river when she's singing mm -hmm. and playing her veena. If you see this picture, the women who were portrayed in his paintings, they wore a lot of this Vadaseri or Kemp jewellery. Mm -hmm. It is very native to South India. If you see inside, there are a lot of these uh, chains and stones. And that is exactly the same thing I've used for the necklace. That you've replicated here as well. One of the most favourite pieces of mine from this collection is this necklace. It contains the love story of Nala Damayanti and Shakuntala Tushin. The way how they first meet, how they elope, how the man leaves the woman and how the woman pines for the man in solitude. What a perfect tribute to the master artist